Hope everyone can hear. I thought I'd try something a little bit different today. So as you know, my channel is about data science and sports analytics, but one of my real passions in life is also cooking. Over time, I came to realize that cooking and data science have a tremendous amount in common. I also found that cooking was a great way to explain data science to people who are not in the field. So not many people have actually done data science, but almost everyone has prepared a meal on their own. I love this data science and cooking analogy, and I use it to explain data science to my friends and family, people that I just met, really anyone, because it is that simple. Hopefully this video will give you a taste of what data science is like. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And if you wanna see more content at the intersection of data science and sports analytics, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you can see when I post my next weekly video. The data science life cycle bears a striking resemblance to how a chef would go about preparing a new meal for a restaurant. So the first thing that they need is they have to have an idea about what type of problem they're trying to solve. For a chef, this would be an idea of a new type of dish that they were looking to make. Next, they actually have to gather the ingredients. So for a chef, they may not know all of the ingredients that they need, but they'd go to the store or they'd look in the fridge to see you know, what ingredients are necessary. If they don't have them, they'd go purchase them. In data science, you'd actually go out and collect this data. From the onset, you might have most of the data that you need, but you reserve the right to actually go back and collect more and append that append that to the data frame that you're using. As a chef, when we first purchase our ingredients, the ingredients by themselves aren't inherently very valuable. We really have to combine them in order for them to produce really unique flavors that are very interesting. You know, I don't see too many people eating just salt and pepper by themselves. The same goes for our data. Our data by itself is not inherently useful. It's how we actually analyze it, how we combine it, and how we evaluate it that produces true insight, true models, after collecting your ingredients, the first thing you have to do is clean them. Now, if you eat dirty food or dirty ingredients, you could get sick or the food might not taste very good. The same thing goes for your data. We usually have to clean our data before we put it into our models. If we're using bad data and we put it into a model, we usually get a bad result. Now, this is called garbage in, garbage out in the industry, and that's something that is really important and often overlooked. Sometimes we have to adjust the composition of our ingredients for them to be useful in our cooking. An example would be we very rarely just eat whole eggs with the shell and everything. We usually crack them open and you know, put them in a bowl and mix them, whatever. We also usually cut things. For example, onions, we dice them up before we actually uh, put them in our food. You know, there are some dishes that use whole onions, but some also use diced onions. This is very similar to feature engineering in data science. For some different algorithms, you want to format your data in different ways. And you can also actually get better results if you format it in different ways as well. So sometimes you put data into categories. Sometimes you'd like to have it be numeric, or sometimes you create something altogether new before you feed it into a model. An example would be roasting garlic, that changes the flavor, or cooking the onions before you put it in the next step. These subtle things change the flavor of your recipe and can produce better tasting results in your cooking, but can also produce better analytical results in your data science. If you're cooking from scratch, most chefs really taste the ingredients as they go. They have to understand how the fresh flavors of each different ingredient integrate with each other and how the relationships are between the ingredients. They also wanna know how much of each ingredient they should put in to the final meal that they're preparing. Again, this bears a really interesting resemblance to the exploration phase of a data science project. With these exploration phases, you're trying to understand which variables are related to each other and which ones might be useful in the model. You'll be able to see which ones you actually want to include and which ones you might not want to include because they might be overly related. After we've assembled all of the ingredients in the proper proportions, it's time for us to actually cook the meal. When it comes to cooking, and using heat, there's a bunch of different methods or different tools that you can use. You can use an oven, you can bake it in the oven, you can broil it in the oven, you can microwave, you can grill, you can boil, you can sous vide. There's so many different options out there. And this is very similar to the algorithm selection process for data science. So now in data science, you know generally the type of problem you're solving, so you can eliminate some of the different algorithms out there. 
but you want to try a couple different ones to see which produces the best result. In cooking, you want to figure out roughly which type of cooking method you're going to use, perhaps sous vide or you're going to grill it, and you want to experiment with those two to see which one produces the best result. After we've chosen our cooking medium, it's important to finely tune what temperature we should actually be cooking the meal at and for how long. This is very similar to the model tuning process in data science. We want to figure out exactly the things that we can control within the model and we want to optimize them to produce the best results. We produce the best results in cooking when we choose the correct temperature and cook the meal for the correct amount of time. After we determine how we're going to actually cook this meal and after it's prepared, we generally want to see how it's received, but either by our peers or our patrons at a restaurant or our friends. So we share this meal before we make it public on a restaurant menu, for example. This is very similar to the cross-validation process in data science. We want to evaluate our model on real-world samples to make sure that the results are consistent and that we didn't overfit the model. If you catered your, your dish that you made too much to your tastes, perhaps you really have a sweet tooth, that might not be great for the general population. Not everyone may like that. If the taste of the food meets an acceptable standard, usually the next step is to actually make it appetizing, make it look good. There's a huge art of actually plating the food. In a restaurant, this is very important because there's so much uh, connectivity between how a food looks and how it tastes and the aromas, etc. So it's a whole sensory experience. In data science, it's also important to actually give your message, give your analysis in a meaningful way. This is the art of data visualization. And data visualization, kind of just like this art of plating, is so much bigger than just data science. There's really just a whole method and a whole, again, science even in and of itself of creating visuals that are compelling and meaningful and that tell a story. Finally, if we really like our results and we'd like to reproduce this meal at a later date, we create a recipe. If we teach this recipe to line cooks, they can create this dish over and over again with a lot of consistency. For data science, the analogy here is the productionization of code process. You're documenting things very well, you're making it so things run very efficiently over and over again when you retrain the model, and you're making it actually useful to someone else other than yourself. You're able to share this knowledge across a team so that anyone can actually recreate this. At a restaurant, you want patrons to be able to order food, and they don't have to know how the sausage is made, theoretically, they just get the beautiful and, and tasty end result. Now, this is very attuned to how an API should work in general. If we build an API for data science, you should be able to send it a request with some form of, of uh, ask, and it sends back just a response. The, it is a black box and it should stay that way. People don't necessarily have to know how the, the kitchen works or all of the semantics. They're just asking for something and they're getting something very simply in return. I honestly had a tremendous amount of fun making this video. I think it's a very different way to look at data science and a very relatable way to explain this field. So all this talking got me a little bit hungry. I'd like to wish you guys the best of luck on your data science journey.